boys and girls, welcome to the EVS class. Today we are looking at Unit 6, our forests. Forest is a precious natural resource. Natural resources are useful resources that we find right in nature, like vegetation, animals, air, soil and water. Natural resources are indeed gifts of nature that are very useful to us. They broadly fall in two categories. One is exhaustible resources and the second one is inexhaustible resources. Let's look at the first one. Exhaustible resources are also called non-renewable natural resources. They are limited in quantity and as we use them, they reduce in quantity. It takes millions of years for these resources to be formed again. Examples are coal and petroleum. The next type is inexhaustible resources or renewable resources. As the name suggests, they keep renewing themselves. They are available in plenty. What are some of the examples you can think of? Air, water, sunlight, forests. These are all renewable natural resources. How do we define a forest? A forest is a large area of land that is thickly covered with trees. There are many uses of forests. Let's look at a few of them. Forests help in soil conservation. Forests control floods and thus prevent soil erosion. When the trees are holding the soil together, it is difficult to erode the soil. Forests keep the air clean by absorbing carbon dioxide and giving out oxygen. A tree in its lifetime absorbs about a ton of carbon dioxide. Thus, the forests keep air fresh and cool. Forests also help in causing rainfall. We get timber, firewood, pulp, lac, resins, gum, herbs, grasses, fruits and leaves from the forest. Plants with medicinal properties are grown in forests. Timber is one of the most important products of forests. It's used in building houses, making tools and furniture. Forests are used also for sericulture and apiculture. Did you know that tribal communities are very attached to forests. They even consider the forest sacred. In India, tribal communities like Nagas, Santals and Garos, to name a few, are very dependent on forests for their livelihood. How are these tribals dependent on forests? They get a lot of things from the forest that are very useful to their livelihood. For example, wood, fruits, honey, wax and herbs. They also make some things out of the things that they take from the forest and sell them in markets. They take bamboos and canes and make toys and baskets. They also take wild flowers and make fragrance out of them. They take leaves like sal leaves and make plates and bowls out of them. These things that they make are sold in local markets called hearts. So they earn money out of the things that they take from the forest. So their lives are hugely dependent on the forest. As I mentioned earlier, these tribes consider the forest sacred. This is one of the strategies to conserve or to protect forests. It is called naming a forest as a sacred grove. In this strategy, we dedicate a forest to a local deity or a god. So when you consider that place a sacred grove, nobody is permitted to cut down trees or kill animals or birds there. This will help in the conservation of forests, which is very important for the survival of the tribals.
A huge problem that we face in our society today is deforestation. Deforestation has a lot of adverse effects on the society and also on the nature. Let's look at a few of them. Deforestation leads to soil erosion that also leads to floods and landslides. Deforestation deprives the animals and wildlife of their homes. They become homeless. Deforestation also makes the tribals suffer because they are devoid of their livelihood if the forests are wiped out. Deforestation also affects our climate conditions. It is very important for us to preserve or conserve our forests. The government has taken many measures towards this. They have set up various national parks and wildlife sanctuaries to conserve forests. There are special programs like social forestry movements and Vanamahotsav. This is an annual tree planting festival held in India. A lot of school children are involved in this. This creates a lot of awareness about conserving our forests. When we talk about preserving our forests, Chipko movement deserves a special mention. This movement was led by Sundarlal Bahaguna in the year 1973 in the state of Uttarakhand. The tree cutters came to the forest to cut down trees. And you know what happened? The women in the community went ahead and hugged the trees and refused to let go of them till the tree cutters left the spot. Chipko in Hindi means to stick to something. They stuck to the trees and protected them. One fifth of our country is covered in forests. Our government takes a lot of measures to conserve these forests that we are already blessed with. Let's look at some of the national parks and wildlife sanctuaries and reserves in our country. We have a total of 733 protected areas that include 103 national parks, 537 wildlife sanctuaries, 26 community reserves and 67 conservation reserves. Some of the famous wildlife sanctuaries are Jim Corbett National Park in Uttarakhand, Sundarbans in West Bengal, Kanha in Madhya Pradesh, Kaziranga and Manas in Assam, Periyar in Kerala, Gir in Gujarat, Rantambor in Rajasthan. A lot of animals like lions, tigers, leopards, rhinos, elephants are all preserved and protected in these sanctuaries. We have learned about the importance of forests. We've also looked at the adverse effects of deforestation and the measures taken by our government towards conserving our forests. We've come to the end of this lesson and I want to leave you with an activity. Why don't you research and make a presentation on the recent Amazon forest fires? Share it with your friends and family. See you soon.